as uh, we agreed not to treat war and uh, military issues as a kind of a global chessboard where uh, imperial empires and other global forces uh, just move their pawns, their human pawns, uh, since uh, it's uh, supposed to be about uh, international solidarity uh, from below, uh, we should speak more about a grassroots approach to uh, transnational connections and transnational solidarity when facing war and imperialism. Because, because all, uh, always in this kind of uh, global process, uh, there are some actual people. Uh, actual people who are struggling for their lives, who are struggling at their workplaces, and who are struggling to survive, even to physically survive. So I come from uh, I come from Poland, which is uh, very well connected uh, with uh, Ukraine, or shall I say that Ukrainian society is very well connected to uh, to Poland uh, due to labor migration, which has been ongoing for the last uh, 20 years. This is also the case of Italy, and we should also remember about it that uh, Poland and Italy are the top migration destinations from migrant workers uh, from uh, from Ukraine. And in both countries, both in Poland and in Italy, uh, they work in the most kind of uh, shitty, underpaid, and uh, uh, hard uh, hard works, hard hard sectors like uh, agriculture, construction, uh, care work, uh, logistics, and uh, many others. And uh, I shall say that uh, we, have a, uh, we have a group of uh, Ukrainian migrant uh, care workers who are organized uh, in our union, uh, fighting for better conditions of work, uh, taking care about elderly, taking care about uh, disabled, and uh, recently also uh, helping uh, their relatives and other Ukrainians who've recently uh, come to Poland during the war. But even without the war, without the recent uh, aggression, uh, we had uh, around uh, one, uh, one and a half million of Ukrainian migrant workers living and working in Poland. And among them, uh, there are these uh, brave uh, women, the care workers. And uh, among them, uh, there was uh, also our, our comrade uh, Fedir. Uh, I will refer to him in a while. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention uh, re regarding migration is that uh, the, the, uh, the, the worth of uh, migrant remittances sent to Ukraine uh, is bigger than uh, international investment in Ukraine. Yes? So, uh, uh, in 2021, uh, uh, migrant remittances uh, formed uh, 15 billion of uh, dollars, whereas international investments uh, were only uh, a bit uh, less than uh, 3 billion dollars. So you can see the scale of, the, uh, of what uh, the working class and the migrant workers contribute to the economy and to households' budgets in their home country, and uh, how much is contributed to this so-called development by the global players. Okay, and uh, so among uh, this uh, over a million of Ukrainian uh, migrant workers in Poland, uh, there was our friend, uh, friend Fedir, uh, who back in Ukraine, in the city of Lviv, was a member of uh, Socialny Ruch. Uh, he was uh, monitoring uh, the strikes and other class struggles in Western Ukraine. He was running a website uh, about class struggles in Western Ukraine. He was helping unions to uh, organize writing reports and so on. Not being able to make a living in Ukraine anymore, he came to Poland, uh, where he worked in uh, uh, different uh, industrial uh, industrial enterprises. He worked with other Ukrainians, but also with people from India, from Colombia, from Bangladesh, from Pakistan. Uh, he to he talked to, uh, to to them all. He was taking detailed notes about uh, the class relations and relations between different migrant workers. He was really devoted uh, devoted to that issue. Uh, he was also supporting our union, he was translating our materials into Ukrainian, he was also reporting back to Ukraine about the situation in Poland and about our, uh, our activities. We were supposed to meet on 24th of February. Fedir was uh, coming to Warsaw for a conference about uh, uh, international debt of, uh, of Ukraine. Uh, 
in the end, we didn't uh, we didn't meet because that was the day where the when the war broke out. Uh, but uh, he made it to Warsaw, uh, even though he knew that the war has already started. Uh, he took part in the conference. Uh, he spoke about uh, Ukrainian debt and the need of its cancellation, especially under the condition of the of the imperialist uh, war. Uh, I don't remember if Vitaly mentioned it, but uh, uh, Ukrainian debt is uh, about 65 uh, billion uh, billion dollars uh, indebted in uh, IMF and other Western, but also uh, Russian institutions. And uh, so, in the end, uh, we didn't uh, we didn't meet because uh, straight from the from the conference uh, in Warsaw, uh, Fedir went uh, to Ukraine to his home country because uh, uh, he decided that he cannot stay uh, in Poland when when his uh, friends and comrades are under uh, shelling. So uh, he the, in Ukraine in Kyiv he joined the territorial defense uh, forces, which is this kind of popular armed resistance. I talked to him two days ago, and uh, he says hi, and he also says that uh, uh, not only him, but in general, uh, all militants uh, in Ukraine who are active uh, either uh, in the front line or assisting civilians are very grateful for uh, all the help and all the solidarity with, which comes from the other countries. And uh, this is what we shall uh, bear in mind, and we should, this is what we should uh, do in the future, uh, is to support uh, this kind of... Uh, this kind of comrades, this kind of organizations. Thank you.